Ukrainian-made missile resources will be increasingly scaled, which will facilitate the destruction of military targets on the territory of the Russian Federation. Military expert, former spokesman for the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Vladislav Zeleznev, said this on Radio NV. He believes that scaling up production and using the Ukrainian drone rocket Palyansia can be effective. The resources of the Ukrainian army are growing more and more. And this is, in fact, very important because while complaining about our Western partners, we need to look for internal opportunities, including through the production of our specialists who manufacture not only the Palyansia, drone missiles or missiles for the Sapsan complex, but also Neptune, Neptune type missiles. Zeleznev noted, according to him earlier, the general director of the Luk Design Bureau Oleg Korostelev repeatedly stated that the further we go, the more the tactical characteristics of this type of missile weapons are growing. And let us not be surprised by the fact that these missiles are designed to destroy sea targets. They work just as effectively on land, destroying enemy military potential at distances that were impossible for us until recently. And this is great news. I hope that only further will we scale up production and accordingly the combat use of this type of missiles in particular. Zeleznev said, the Palyansia drone missile is much faster and more powerful than conventional long-range drones. Ukraine is also developing other missiles, very powerful and long-range. On Ukraine's Independence Day, August the 24th, the new Ukrainian drone missile Palyansia was used for the first time in combat. As President Volodymyr Zelensky reported, Ukraine already has products capable of flying 1,500 kilometers. In the two and a half years of full-scale war, Russia has launched about 10,000 missiles of various types and more than 33,000 glide bombs at Ukraine. Stopping attacks on our cities can be achieved by targeting the carriers of this weaponry, Russian aircraft stationed at military airfields. The first successful combat use of our new weapon, the Ukrainian long-range rocket drone Palyansia, took place. It was designed domestically to destroy the enemy's offensive potential. The number of rocket drones produced will grow, just like our long-range strike drones production did, the efficiency of which we see almost daily, Zelensky said. The development of the Ukrainian long-range drone missile Palyansia was completed in 18 months with several dozen Russian military air bases falling within its range. Ukrainians are determined to never live in a closed authoritarian system again. To achieve victory, they are actually targeting Russian energy infrastructure inside the country. This is stated in the Forbes article. The publication recalls that in late August, Russia sent a wave of drones to Ukraine attacking its energy infrastructure. Last night, Ukraine struck a power plant in Moscow with drones as well as oil depots and refineries. According to the author, Ukraine carried out these strikes to end the war and Putin's rule. Ukraine has options now because it was successful in the initial phase of this invasion, said Nico Lang, a senior fellow in the Transatlantic Defense Program at the Center for European Policy Analysis. According to media reports, Russia's oil and gas revenues amounted to $219 billion in 2020. Together, these two sectors account for 60% of Russia's exports and 40% of the federal budget. So how will this war end? Ukrainian President Zelensky believes his country must escalate to de-escalate, a tactic that includes seizing Russian land and seizing critical Russian energy assets. Putin, however, believes he can win a war of attrition. But at what cost? The longer it goes on, the poorer Russia becomes and the more toothless it looks. It could empower the people and topple the dictator. The publication concludes, according to analysts, attack on Russian energy facilities could have significant consequences for the Russians. According to the experts, from a strike by Ukrainian UAVs on Russian state district power plants and oil refineries in Moscow, it will literally burn. Recall on September the 1st, Ukraine hit a power plant in Moscow with drones. It is also striking oil depots and refineries. Ukrainian attacks on fuel storage facilities and electric substations are retaliatory, aiming to give Russians a taste of their own medicine. Russia's electricity network is already fragile and needs modern technologies to increase resiliency. 
These attacks, combined with the vulnerability of their electricity network, are expected to cause significant suffering for the Russian people this winter, possibly even more than the hardships experienced by the Ukrainian people. The most compelling question is whether the Russian dictatorship will survive. If Russia loses, dissatisfaction among the public and political elites could increase. Continued economic sanctions and military losses may further strain Russia, potentially creating an opportunity for political opposition or factions within the government to challenge Putin's leadership.